In this lesson, we're looking at other kinds of inheritance, co-dominance, incomplete dominance, and polygenic inheritance. So we're specifically looking here at the multiple alleles types of inheritance. All right, Mendelian inheritance was built on ideas that were pretty straightforward. They're talking single genes on autosomal chromosomes, which are in charge of just one trait. And the outcomes are either dominant or recessive phenotypes. But not all inheritance works in this manner or is this straightforward. So we're going to talk about three others. We're looking at co-dominance, incomplete dominance, and polygenic inheritance. Now, in co-dominant inheritance, if two alleles are inherited, so we're talking the heterozygous genotype, then both of them can be expressed equally and independently. So this means that heterozygous combinations of alleles create a new phenotype that doesn't quite fit the standard dominant or recessive category. There are heaps of examples of this, we're going to look at two specific ones. In horse and cattle, their coat colour is dictated by two alleles, one brown-red and one white. Now, the convention used is C for coat colour, and the genotype letter R or W is used as superscripts representing the alleles. Now, obviously, in individuals with homozygous genotypes, we have clear phenotypes, right? They're either white or they're red-brown. However, in a heterozygous individual, both alleles can be expressed and results in what's called a roan phenotype. It's mixed brown, red and white, so those kind of splotchy looking cows. Another really nice example of codominance is in human blood types and other mammals as well. Our ABO blood typing system works by classifying our blood type based on the antigens which are produced on the cell membranes of red blood cells. Now these are known as isoagglutinogens and uh, these, you know, this is our blood typing system. There are many others, uh, but we're, here we're talking type A and type B. So a person with type A has at least one A allele, and the same for people with type B, they have at least one B allele. But if a person receives um, both of these, they're going to be group AB here. If they receive neither of those alleles, they're going to be group O. So this is kind of the recessive phenotype. Again, these are controlled by a single gene with three different alleles. Um, so when they're combined, we actually get four different uh, types of phenotypes here. And this is a really easy uh, kind of inheritance to discuss at home uh, between you and your parents and your siblings, depending on what blood type they are. Now, because codominant inheritance allows for further phenotypes to in, uh, appear and with blood type inheritance showing four possible phenotypes, we start to see frequency histograms becoming more complex. It's no longer just two different outcomes. Um, and we see four phenotypes on this particular histogram. Now, let's talk about incomplete dominance. In this kind of inheritance, the action of one allele doesn't completely dominate or mask the action of another allele. So instead of seeing the straight dominant and recessive phenotypes, we're actually going to get an intermediate phenotype with the heterozygous genotype. Now, this intermediate phenotype will appear, obviously, if both alleles have been accepted. And this is what we're talking about with intermediate phenotype. Now, a really clear example of this is in snapdragons, where alleles for flower colour are red and white. If a plant inherits both copies, or you know, a copy of each of the alleles, the intermediate phenotype will be pink. And this shows the kind of blending effect that appears in incomplete dominance. Now, although we've talked about multiple alleles being available for new combinations to create new phenotypes, we've only talked about traits that are attributed to one single gene. Some traits, however, in fact many, require many different genes across many different chromosomes to interact with one another to produce a phenotype. So in this situation we're looking at one characteristic controlled by two or more genes. And this makes them really complex traits. They're not easily lumped into the dominant recessive basket, which is nice and easy. Traits like skin colour, eye colour, height, they're the kinds of traits we're talking about here, even though we mistakenly simplify them down and talk about them in terms of dominance and recessiveness. So essentially, there's a really, if there is a really wide spectrum of phenotypes, it's most likely caused by polygenic inheritance. And this continuous variation is seen across a lot of human traits, and they're really obvious, right? So we could compare human height, which is a polygenic trait, to Mendel's peas, where it was only monogenic. So it was either really tall or really short. 
Some of the genes involved in polygene interaction may have a really big effect, some may have a lesser effect. So we might be talking about things like secretion of growth hormones, which will impact height here. So if a mutation occurs in one of these genes, it might have little to no effect, whereas in another one, it might have huge ramifications. So remember, the larger number of genes involved, the larger number of combinations of genes there, and we're going to get that continuous variation. Some other really good examples of polygenic inheritance outside of human height include wheat grain color and skin color there as well. So I'll put that one back up again. Now this distribution is all about corn ear length and width. And by studying these types of frequencies, scientists can decide which crops to crossbreed to get the ideal offspring to plant and harvest. So it is really important to understand all these different frequencies and possibilities in a genetic cross. So again, we've covered this time multiple and all these points relate to that as well.